11th Sunday in our season of Trinity. A particular welcome too to those of you sharing in our worship this afternoon online. We do welcome you also to our worship this morning. I'm sure we're all very familiar with the rules and regulations now, keeping our face masks on during worship this morning, and also the social distancing, so I don't need to say any more about that. But of course, do please be aware of keeping those distances and keeping each other safe as we gather in worship this morning. I do hope you all get a copy of the service sheet in front of you, which will be all that you need this morning for our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some words from the prophecy of Isaiah. The Lord waits to be gracious to you. He will rise up to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. We pray now together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come now to our words of confession, let's spend a, just a few moments reflecting over this past week. Aspects of our lives we ought to bring to God in confession and things perhaps we have failed to do. Asking God, in this few moments, for forgiveness. Let us now confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is us, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And hear now the words of forgiveness God gives to each and every one of us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. A reading from the prophesy of Isaiah. 
Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, and the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm is number 138, and seeing it's not being sung this morning, let's say together the response, the first two little lines on the top. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you, O Lord. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you, O Lord. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. For you have heard the words of my mouth. I will bless you in the presence of the angels. I will adore you before your holy temple. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you, O Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered, which increased the strength of my soul. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you, O Lord. Stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you, O Lord. Letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your uh, spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually 
we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministry, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed into heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We were very fortunate, I hope for some of you as well, to have some time out in this holiday season, very unusual holiday time. But we went up to Scotland to see some friends we hadn't seen for many, many years and to reconnect and we had a wonderful time enjoying Scottish hospitality which is excellent, I can recommend. We also got to know Glasgow a bit better. We hadn't been there for many years and a colleague of mine who's just retired from ministry is there hence we went to see him as well a wonderful opportunity to get a feel for Scotland which you know we hadn't been there for about at least over 20 years but Dominic made a comment as we were actually on the hop on hop off bus as some of us might have done when you'd visit a city wonderful way getting to know it made a comment really that the Scottish saltire flag was everywhere. Every building seemed to have it, the bottle of milk you bought in the shop seemed to have it, and the saltire seemed to be just ubiquitous all around the place. But not many Union flags, which is very interesting, especially in these strange times of the Union. Not that I'm going to open the can of worms here this morning about that. But the can of worms I hope to open up this morning really is all about identity. And it's a big aspect of our readings this morning. Just who are you? What we did feel, I think, in Scotland, uh, with their salt tyres everywhere, seemingly, that there was something quite distinctive about Scotland as regards England or any other part of the country. And perhaps more so because they had that distinctive salt tie which we are so familiar with. Plus, of course, we've been hearing the rise of the independent voices in the media over the recent months. And it just seemed to us that the Scottish seem to know more about who they are than perhaps we do. They do have an identity and they seem to be quite sure of it, certainly with their flag, but also with their traditions, which we enjoyed. Um, although there was no tattoo this year, great sadness there, of 
a great event in their cultural life up there. But we had a wonderful time, despite the rain, and there's lots of that, and the chill and the wind, lots of that too. The day when Edward Colston's uh, 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 statue was pulled down from its plinth on the 7th of June, a huge debate also opened up for us here in Bristol about our identity. What do these statues represent to us and to Bristolians generally? What does it mean to be a white Bristolian or a black Bristolian? What does history mean for us in these characters on their plates? Many of whom I have to say I've never looked at. I wouldn't have a clue who was on them, if I'll be honest. But the number of the debate wasn't, well, that no doubt will continue is just who are we? Our identity as Bristolians, and how do we look back on our history? That question comes to us uh, powerfully in our readings this morning. Just who are you? How do you see yourself, even as a Christian? How do you make that identity clear? Just how do you understand yourself and all the elements that make you up as they make me up? I was reflecting on my own kind of character and background, born in the colonies, as some would put it, and under the African sun, I like to call it, of parents who had immigrated to South Africa, one British, one Dutch, I see myself as an African, but also European, yet with much roots as well in Wales, with my mother's family coming from Aberystwyth. We are all complicated mixtures, aren't we, each and every one of us? And it's fascinating to know just what makes us feel who, a kind of, gives us an identity that we're comfortable with. It is complex, fascinating, but also important. And in Britain, of course, in the, you know, an island that, as we are, is an island full of immigrants over the centuries. Fascinating country that we live in. Fascinating identity that we struggle with in these challenging times. Now, to our text of this morning, from Isaiah, a key question Isaiah puts to the people of Israel, too, in exile. Just who are you? As we know from his writing, the temptation over many years, as they had been away from Palestine, was to forget who they were, to assimilate into the community, the culture of Babylonian life. Very easy to do. Become one of the locals. And in a kind of way, be more acceptable to the locals the Babylonians. And no doubt, as we hear from Isaiah, many did become just like the locals. But Isaiah powerfully reminds them all of the rock from which they were hewn, the roots from which they received their life, their identity, distinctive identity from those around amongst whom they live. Abraham was called and blessed, and that blessing still means something even in a foreign land, under a foreign power, even under a foreign flag. Even in exile, that wilderness, they should not forget who they are. And the hope of God's blessing was still to be there for them. They were not forgotten, and they would return home. Isaiah promises that hope. For them to stick to their identity, to hold faithfully to who they were, and God's redemption would come. They needed to be patient. Now, crucially for Isaiah, there was a promise in the wilderness of redemption. God says, I will bring my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out to you. Whatever happens in the world, God says his salvation will never disappear. Words of Israelites longed to hear and needed to hear. The exile was long and very hard, but despite this, they were the people of God, called, set apart, loved. And Isaiah reminds them of that very powerfully. Exile, though, was, 
without doubt, a calamity for them. The humiliation of enslavement, of ridicule, of the destruction of their homelands, that was all dispiriting, devastating. I think it is hard to imagine just what they went through far from home. So Isaiah's words are important as he reminds them of who they are, lest they forget. Now Paul in Romans chapter 12, in a similar vein, speaks powerfully to the Christians in Rome about who they are and how they should live. Becoming a Christian was not a philosophy, nor a pack of ideas, but it was a way of life, a way of faith that needed to be lived daily. As Christians then, they had a new life, a fresh beginning, a new direction. They could not carry on as they had done before, not adhering to the rules, as it were, that Paul explicitly shares with them about being a Christian and what it means. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. Give yourselves as a living sacrifice. Christian witness down the ages has always been powerful to this very day in which we live, where the love and forgiveness of God has manifested itself to the people all around. It was a great, powerful witness in those days. And hence the church grew dramatically. On the radio the other day, a woman was being interviewed, who had lost a son in a brawl at a rave, and she spoke most wonderfully about her inability to hold hate in her heart for his killer. She spoke very simply, very powerfully, about love and forgiveness, and I was just startled, amazed to hear it in such simple terms, the kind of witness that she was giving to how Christ was active and working in her life. Amazing. Do we easily hold a grudge? Think ill perhaps of another very easily or be offended very easily? Paul reminds us that we are, are now in a new fellowship, a new family, one family, the family of God, just as the family of the people of Israel in exile. We're all different. We have different skills, personalities, histories, challenges. But we are all made new into the body of Christ through our baptism. And that is something we celebrate today in our readings on this glorious Sunday worship. Now in our reading from Matthew, the well-known passage where Jesus asks his disciples who people say that he is, and he has various replies from them all. But then there is the key question, a key one for us today. Who do you say that I am? Where do you stand on the question? Jesus puts a fundamental question to his disciples and indeed to each one of us today as we gather in worship. Who do you say that I am? And our answer will determine who we are, what our identity is, what family we belong to. What rock have we been hewn from? What is the direction of your life and mine that we follow? And Peter then answers, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And that answer changes everything for Peter, for his disciples. But it is an answer that changes everything for you and me as well. And we need to remind ourselves, like Isaiah did, time and again, who are you? What is at the very heart of your life and faith? What direction is your life moving in? What witness are you giving to that truth in your lives? The acknowledgement that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is at the very centre of their lives and ours defines their identity for us today at its heart. And with much else goes with it, especially being at Bristolian as well. We are Christians, certainly, but also Christolians. And also we have our own histories, our backgrounds that shape us and make us. But in these uncertain times, we can be certain of this, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. 
and that we are, each and every one of us, part of his family, renewed in his grace and love. This is the rock from which we were you, reborn into an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and sacred to God. Alleluia. What an inheritance we have. We do stand on solid ground and we can withstand the vicissitudes of life from COVID, the economy and much else we know that will be facing us in the weeks and months to come. We know who we are. I was chatting to a parishioner a few days ago who was given a diagnosis of inoperable cancer. An eight o'clocker, so some will not know who this person is, but a wonderful person. And in conversation, it was wonderful to hear the clarity of her faith as she planned the remaining months of her life with her family and friends. Take your breath away when you see faith so upfront and so clear cut, and her identity and knowledge of who she is as God's daughter in his family. So back to apostolic identity. I hope in the months to come, in this debate, we will approach it with the heart and mind of Christ, living out the good news of his love, forgiveness and redemption, steadfast in our faith, and clear in our identity first and foremost as a member of God's family, a disciple of Christ, living our lives of faith day by day, revealing the glory of God in our witness offering up praise and glory to him day by day.
invite you now to stand and let us now share together and confess our faith in the words on our sheets. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in earth and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us now pray now to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, transform us by your love, that we may know and do your will that we may live and work to your praise and glory. Through Christ, the King of glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Heavenly Father, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies to you. You give us life, you give us love, you give us yourself. May we give our lives, our love, ourselves to you. We pray for the unity of your church, that we may work together for the good of all. We thank you for the gifts you have given to us. Let us use them to your glory. We pray for all who exercise the gifts of ministry, teaching and healing. And in particular, we ask you to strengthen Justin, our Archbishop, Viv, Bishop of Bristol, and Lee, Bishop of Swindon. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in the Anglican cycle of prayer, we hold before you the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia and the Most Reverend Melter Teas, Archbishop of Southeast Asia and Bishop of Sabah. In the Bristol Diocese, we pray for St. Leonard's Church in the parish of Mighty and its rector, the Reverend Tonya Nixon. We also hold before you Mighty Primary School and its head teacher, Mrs. Sally Greaves, as they prepare to welcome pupils returning in the coming weeks. Locally, we pray for the River of Life Church here in Westbury Village, under the leadership of Pastors Stephen and Leslie Chowdhury and Elders Darren and Andrew. We pray for the work of Tear Fund, especially at this time as they mobilise their church partners to support the coronavirus response in some of the world's poorest communities. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. We pray for wisdom for the Queen, the Prime Minister and Cabinet, and for integrity, truth and compassion throughout all in government. May our government be a strong force for good in foreign policy and in bringing relief to those suffering here and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all people that their talents and abilities may be used may be able to be used. Bless each in their vocation and work. We ask that you give hope and strength to those currently on furlough, to those who have been made redundant, and to all who are unemployed or anxious about their livelihood. We hold before you our loved ones, our neighbours, friends, and the communities to which we belong, and the places where we work, and ask for your blessing upon them. As a church family, we have been asked to pray for Max, William, Derek Shepherd, Myra Wilcox, Benita Wallace Langley, James, Anne Memory, Tim Taylor, June, Stella Bateman, David, and Pamela Winter. And also for those in long-term need, including Shirley Cooper, Jan Kelly, 
Carly Phillips, Zoe Wilcox, Vic and Edna Clark, Lionel Reeves, Betty Bennell, and Kerry Ford. May they know your loving presence in their particular times of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all who have been strengthened by their faith, and remember before you those known to us who have recently died, including Edna Nelms, Barry Graham, and Barbara Bailey, and those whose anniversaries of death fall this week, including John Paul, Denise Motag Hunt, Heather Jill Hereford, Bob Rowe, Ursula Dinner Mead, and Paul Walker Dean. We pray for their families and all who remember them. Lord, in your mercy, we hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. We come to the sharing of peace, and as I mentioned in my few words about us being part of the family of God, the sharing of peace is that affirmation that we are each to the other, brother and sister, and we share that peace of Christ in our hearts. I invite you now please to stand as we come to share the words of peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the risen Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we can share that peace by looking at each other and acknowledging that peace. One to another. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this bread to set before you, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you, in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Life is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of the God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. There's a few instructions before we share communion. Let me invite you by raising the body of Christ and say, This is the body and blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord of all mercy, we, your faithful people, have celebrated that one true sacrifice which takes away our sins and brings pardon and peace. By our communion, keep us firm on the foundation of the gospel and preserve us from all sin through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let me pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. We receive now the blessing of Almighty God. I invite you then to remain seated as we hear some music, our voluntary, and then the dismissal for us all will follow after that. The Lord be with you. And also. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all whom you love, this day and always. Amen.
Just before we have the word of dismissal, just to remind everyone that we are asking everyone to take everything with them, particularly your slips and your your glasses and all the rest of it. Make sure nothing is left behind in church. We'd be very grateful if you could ensure that. No lingering in the church either. If you'd like to make your exits, I uh, think from the back first, working the way that the, and you'll have instruction on the wardens and science persons for that. Would you now please stand as we come to the words of this missal, sending us out of this church building in the love and joy of our Lord and risen Jesus Christ. Go in peace. To love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.